The main differences between the mRNA vaccines, which are Pfizer and Moderna, and the adenoviral vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, are really uh, the way that the genetic material of the virus is delivered. So the mRNA vaccines have a uh, genetic material that's made as an RNA, which is just a little bit different to the DNA that's made, uh, that's used in the AstraZeneca vaccine. But it's the way it's delivered. So with the RNA vaccines, they're, they're packaged up with a, like a lipid membrane, which is the same sort of component as what our cells are made from as well. And so they're packaged up that way and then provided to the muscle cells which can then take up that RNA and then make the spike protein which is the, the surface protein of the virus and it's the main or first part that our immune system will recognise when we do get infected with the real coronavirus. In regards to the adenoviral vector, it's also providing the same piece of genetic material. It's providing it as a DNA instead of an RNA, which is just a slight difference in the, the composition of that genetic code. But instead of being tr sort of transmitted or transferred via that uh, lipid membrane component, it's actually being transferred using another va virus, an adenovirus backbone. But what it does is it helps package up that genetic component of the SARS-2 virus and help transport it inside our immune cells so they can then make the same spike protein to induce a strong immune response against that. So the vaccines both have similar sort of efficiency. I think the mRNA vaccine uh, have been generating slightly better protective capacity uh, and through some of the vaccine trials. But the main advantage to the mRNA vaccines have really been the the speed at which they've been able to produce these vaccines and that's because they're synthetically made so they're just made from the chemicals that are, are used to make up our genetic code these are able to be stringed together uh, in the lab and pulled together that way and so it's much faster than having to go into a lab and grow up viruses in cell culture and other components so it's, it's, it's much faster in that regard. One of the advantages with the mRNA vaccines is the fact that they can be rapidly modified to adapt or bring in any of those mutations that we're seeing appearing in the number of different uh, variants. So whether that's the Brazilian or the South African variant, they can rapidly just take that sequence information that other countries are generating and they're seeing in their countries and they can take that into the lab, quickly synthesize that variant and then uh, generate that into a new vaccine. And so it is very uh, adaptable, whereas it takes a lot longer to do that with some of the other uh, vaccines. Because the mRNA vaccine production is, is fairly new, we haven't yet got a vaccine um, mRNA producing facility, but it'd be a great advantage for us, both within the COVID space, but also beyond that for us to have something like that. So in regards to being able to have um, our own vaccine, uh, RNA producing facility means we could rapidly adapt the vaccine if we need to for emerging mutations, or perhaps being able to generate more uh, vaccines if we have to continue to boost, because we don't yet know the longevity of these different vaccines and if some might provide longer lasting immune responses than others and so it's likely boosters will be required and so being able to produce more of this vaccine would be a great advantage but it's it's not really only for COVID that these facilities would be useful because there's other viruses that might emerge or existing viruses where these mRNA producing facilities would add a lot of advantage, but also for other areas as well like cancer uh, and other areas of research where they could offer a lot of value.